Welcome to episode 14 of My Yarny Corner. My name's Alex and I live in Yorkshire in the UK and this is my podcast all about knitting and crochet. So welcome everybody. I hope that you're all okay and I hope that you've had a lovely crafty two weeks. Oh, before I forget, because I always seem to forget, I'll put in the description box below all the information on where you can find me. I'm on Ravelry, Instagram, there is a, a Facebook page for the podcast if you can't use Instagram. I'm not very good on Ravelry. I'm get I'm slightly getting better now. I've kind of figured out now how I can reply to posts in a group. So I, I'm I'm getting there. <laughs> it's just a long process. Maybe I don't know. In the next five years, I'll learn how to use Ravelry properly. Um, you can email me as well. There is a Kofi account if you would like to support the podcast. And yeah, all that will be in the description box below. And anything that I talk about in the video will be linked in the description box below as well. If I do forget to link anything that I've mentioned in the video, just leave me a comment or send me a message and I will fix that and update the show notes. So I hope that you're all okay. Um, you can probably tell I do sound a little bit bung bleh, bunged up. We've all had a really, really nasty cold. Definitely not been covid um, if I keep having to pause the video to sneeze or cough, then I'm really sorry. We, I'm much better than I was last weekend. I was really felt poorly. It's been a really nasty cold, literally aching all over. Couldn't get off the sofa. I was just like, oh, I'm dying, I'm dying. So bad, but hey-ho, getting better now. So I will get on with the podcast and stop bitching on about being poorly. The dog's just at the side of me here. Come say hello can't see her because she's so small. There you go. You gonna say hello? No. Oh, don't kiss me. <laughs> she's just sitting down at the side on me. So yeah, I have one working, no, one finished object and a few works in progress to talk about today. But before I get into the knitting, I just want to mention a cow that I'm going to be joining in with. The lovely Ruth, who is the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast, has teamed up with, now I did write this down, Little Monkeys and Me, and they are doing an Across the Shawl Pond Cal. I'll put it on the screen what it is. Now, I think that's running the 1st of July till the 1st of September. If you go on to the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast, she talks about it on the latest episode. There's only three rules, no scarves, no cowls and you can use whips that you've already got but they've got to be less than 25% completed so I can't put my Stephen West shawl in it but I have started um, a pattern just for this cowl it looks really really good and if you go to Ruth's podcast she's even given you some really nice shawl ideas she showed quite a few that I were watching there's some really nice shawl ideas that she's got so if you're wanting to join in a cowl that's a good one to join in um, and I mentioned on my last podcast as well that the that Suzanne from Green Lambkin Yarns is also running um, a make along, which is the Christmas in July, um, which I'm so behind on. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, she's running the Christmas in July, so I think there's a few Christmas in Julys going at the moment, but I don't know who else is doing it. But yeah, there's a Christmas in July from Green Lambkin Yarns running as well. And one more thing that I just did want to mention, Jane, who is Mouse Knits and Crafts, she also has a YouTube channel. Sorry about that, coughing fit. And um, what was I saying? Jane, who is Mouse Knits and Crafts, also has a YouTube channel. Oh, she's running an advent swap. And I know that she's got very, very few places left on the advent swap. But if you go and watch her podcast, I think she talks about it in the last podcast. If you wanted to do an advent swap, and I, I think it's a minimum of 10, uh, 10 gram minis to put in the advent swap. Um, but yeah, if you just want to hop over and join in that. I'm not joining in that this year because I've already, I've bought an advent calendar for myself anyway. But I had, I'd already committed to another advent swap, so I can't really commit to two. It'd be a little bit quite a lot of pressure to try and make two advent calendars but it's a really good idea and it's a really good thing to do um if you've never had a yarn advent calendar like me I've never had one before and last year I really really wished I'd bought one so I was adamant I was going to have one this year so as it turns out I'm going to have two 
which I feel a little bit guilty for because I don't need two advent calendars at all. But I had already committed to a swap and I've been buying the Green Lambkin Yarn advent calendar as well. But like I say, a swap is a really good way to do it because you, you basically make up an advent calendar for somebody and somebody else will make up one for you. Jane will organise it all, tell you where you need to send yours and you'll get one in return as well. But if you want to know anything more about that, if you hop on over to Jane's podcast and she talks about it on there. And that is it, I think. Yep, yeah, I think that's everything that I just wanted to talk about before we got into the knitting content. So, let's get into the knitting content. Shall we start with finished objects? Mine is over here. Are you ready for this? Da -da. The Whitmore is finally, finally finished. I'll put it on so you can see. This, oh, this got to a point where I just thought it was never going to end. It's really warm today, so I'm not going to have it on for long either. But I will put it on so you can see. And I'm sat on the floor as well, which is really silly to try and podcast and try and show you things. So I'll have to just kind of kneel up onto my knees. But yeah. Pulled my hair in, ow. Right, so this is it. I've made it. Can you see? Can you see? If I do that, you can see it's slightly longer. Hang on, my pants are falling down. Pull my pants up. Slightly longer. It sits just there. And I did make the sleeves shorter as well. I would like to say that it was because I planned to make the sleeves shorter. But when I was on the sleeves, they were just going on forever. This is the bishop sleeves. And you can have, there's an option on the pattern to do tapered sleeves or bishop sleeves. So I decided I wanted the bishop sleeves. I'm really warm already. I'm going to have to take it off one second. <sighs> Sorry, too warm to wear. It's too warm to keep on. So the pattern um, has got two types of sleeves. You've got the bishop sleeves or the tapered sleeves. I did the bishop sleeves, which you should have knit for, I think it was 17 inches. The idea was the sleeves would be really long with a longer cuff and then they would just fold over the cuff. But when I was doing the sleeves, it just went on forever and ever and ever. So I made them three quarters, which actually I quite like, to be honest. Um, so what I did on here is I just knitted 10 inches from the underarm and then you do a sharp decrease to your cuffs and I just did the cuffs. I can't remember what the pattern called for but I did it in two and a half inches. So the sleeves are just sitting here which is really nice. But this section here I absolutely loved. I think I did this in like three days. It went so quick because I was just addicted to making it but as you all know the end of it took about three months. <laughs> the colour is mustard and it's by Women's Institute Yarn. I said on the last podcast, every time I mentioned West Yorkshire Spinners on the last podcast, I meant Women's Institute. I don't know what was going on with me last, last fortnight, but I kept getting everything wrong. So the yarn is Women's Institute and it's in the mustard colourway and it's just lovely. And I think I only used four and a half balls there were 100 gram balls and it was four and a half balls the pattern is done in um fingering weight with a, a mohair and it looks really lovely the pattern's actually in white it's absolutely gorgeous i'll pop a picture on the screen but yeah i think once my problem was once i'd done this section here it was so interesting and so fun that suddenly it became boring and it was all in one color which the pattern is anyway but that's why it took so long. It shouldn't have, I did I did make it longer than what the pattern had suggested because I do like it to cover my bum. I think um I think I did an extra two or three inches on the body. So that made it longer as well. But yeah, now it's finished. I absolutely love it. And I really can't wait to wear it in winter because it's gonna be gorgeous. And it's so soft as well, and it's acrylic yarn, so I can stick it in the washing machine and it'll be fine. But yeah. 
So the Whitmore is finally, finally finished. And that's my only finished object. Because I have been making, well, I've done loads on the Stephen West actually, I'll talk about that in a minute. Sorry, coughing fit again. So that is my only finished object. So I shall move now on to whips. I have done quite a bit of work on the Stephen West shawl, the winter lights. You can't really tell because there's so many stitches and a lot of work looks like three rows. But I'm gonna show it anyway. because I've, It's all I've worked on all weekend in the past couple of days, to be honest. And I really, really do love it. So this is the Stephen West. So as you can see, I have finished the honeycomb section now and I'm into the wavy border. There we go. But it's jumped suddenly from, when I was doing the honeycomb section, there was about 400 stitches on the needle. And then when you get to the wavy border, it jumps to like 680 or something now. So each row is just taking forever and ever and ever. This is the back. talked about the yarns before but the I'll just go through them again quickly this green one here is by Green Lambkin Yarns this purple and this brown one are both by Diane Knit by Kate the brown one has actually got alpaca in it and the white is just um it's a commercial yarn I think it's called truly truly rich wool um oops so yeah, slightly funny story about this. Like I said, I've been working on this all weekend. Now, as we all know, I'm a crocheter who knits. So I've not been knitting a really long time. And I've never learned how to pick up a stitch just because it's never been a problem. I've never dropped a stitch and thought, you know, where it's gone down and I've had to pick it up. I've dropped a stitch off a needle and I've been able to pick it up that way, but I've never dropped a stitch and had it slide down so I said to you I've been working on this all weekend and I was on I was on this section here the dots and bubbles and I was working away and the dog was sat on my knee and she moved just as I was moving stitches along along the needles and they all just fell off and I think there was about 10 stitches that came off and I just I panicked I thought oh my god I was able to hook back on a lot of them but there were two that had gone down and I, I just didn't know what to do all this work and I thought I've ruined it I've lost it what am I gonna do and I absolutely panicked I am in the zoom group for um, Ari Bart Designs and we have um, a little Instagram message, uh, message group thing so I was straight on the message oh my god somebody needs to help me now please Who, who's around to help me I dropped a stitch and I don't know how to fix it and obviously people are busy and so I also messaged Megan who is Pearl Passion on YouTube and I said you're gonna have to help me you're gonna have to help me now so bless her <laughs> she did she mentioned this on her last podcast and she did not tell everybody how dramatic I actually was I, I was almost in tears I was so upset I was panicking my partner came running down from upstairs and he heard me shout and he's like, oh my God, what's the matter? And I'm like, look, look what I've done. And he kind of just stood there hopping from foot to foot going, I don't know how to help you. Megan did come to the rescue. So thank you, Megan. <laughs> I am so sorry for just ringing you up in such a state. And she talked me through picking up the stitches. Honestly, I was so dramatic. She must have thought, what an idiot. But I just panicked. So she talked me through picking up the stitches. And I hadn't got it completely right. So I also had Mandy, who is Mouse's Makes, on YouTube as well. She was also in touch with me telling me how to do it. So between them both, they rescued my shawl. So Megan and Mandy, I owe you the biggest, biggest thank you ever. Thank you so much. And I am sorry for being so dramatic. You must have thought, what an idiot. I just panicked. I thought I'd ruined my shawl. I thought I'd never be able to pick these stitches up, but you can't, I think, I can't even tell where it was. And you're all probably just sat there going, yeah, everyone knows how to pick up a stitch, Alex. You really should have learned that by now. But I didn't. Future note, make sure you know how to pick up stitches. But yeah, you can't even tell where I'd done it. 
as I picked them up, I'd managed to twist two, which Mandy had taught me round on how to untwist them and sort it out. I think, I can't remember where it was. It was somewhere in the middle of this row and you can't even see. So yeah, <laughs> it was such a dramatic moment. But it's all sorted and all fixed. So yeah, just into the wavy section now. I think you do each colour twice. So this last bit I think is going to take a little bit longer because it's like I say, there's about 680 sti stitches now, which I know for a Stephen West shawl is probably quite small. I know some of you that are doing the really big ones like the slip extravaganza, I think had a thousand stitches on. But for me, this is a lot of stitches to contend with in one go. But I'm really, really super, super impressed with it. I'll do it all by that. It's gorgeous, isn't it? I really love it. And I'm so pleased that I went for this white as the main colour. So yeah, work in progress number one. And I finished, actually, going back to that, I finished the main colour and that's what I've got left in the main colour. So I didn't even use 100 grams, which was good, which means I can use this for heels, toes and cuffs in some socks. So work in progress number one. Work in progress number two actually follows in with um, Ruth's shawl, um, get my words right, across the pond shawl cowl. This is what I'm going to be entering into now. Now this is living in the most special bag. I'm going to talk about this at the end of the bag, so I'm not going to show it yet because I've got a little bit of incoming to show at the end. I'm going to talk about my bag then. So... This is what I am making. This is the yarn that I got last week and this is the terribly simple shawl pattern. Now, if I, where have I got that yarn? I talked about this yarn on the last podcast. This is Drops Delight and it's colour 18. I was saying last time I didn't whether to do socks. <coughs> I didn't know whether to do socks or a shawl. So my friend Heather got in touch with me and she gave me um, a really good shawl pattern. She didn't give me, it was a free pattern on Ravelry. I'll put a picture on the screen. And I saw it and I thought, yeah, that's perfect for this yarn. So that's what I'm making. It's called the Terribly Simple Shawl. I have added these eyelets. They aren't in the pattern just so it makes it a little bit more interesting for me to knit. And I've also added um, an I-card border edging type thing as well, because I think I do like the look of it. That's what I've been making in the Stephen West shawl, and I've just put it into this as well. So I've, I've made a couple of modifications to the pattern, but I'm just going to use, I've got four balls of this yarn now, and I'm just going to use all four. So I've just got that left of the first one. And it's going to be absolute, I really love this. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. So this is going to be my entry into the Across the Pond Shawl. Across the Pond Shawl Cal. But yeah, it's gorgeous. I don't know how often I'm going to do these eyelet rows. Can you see? I think this blue section of the, of the um, yarn is quite a big section. So I might just do the eyelets in every one of these blue sections but yeah it's a really really easy simple pattern that's going to knit up quite quickly so yeah that is that i also have my entry into the green lumpkin yarns christmas in july now i showed these on the last podcast and i was making um the snow frost socks by k jones I did rip them out. It wasn't big, there was nothing wrong with the pattern. The pattern's lovely. It's just with the yarn being so variegated, it didn't look great. You couldn't really see the pattern. And this yarn is so pretty that it works much better just showing itself off on its own. So I'd got quite a way into it as well. So I pulled them all out and I've started again. Whoops, I'm all in a tangle. So I've started again just to make them vanilla. This is the Sugar Plum Fairy yarn by Green Lambkin Yarns. And this is my entry into Christmas in July. 
And the reason there were going to be Christmas in July was because of the pattern that I've pulled out. And now there's no Christmas theme to it at all. Except if I say that they're nice Christmassy socks for me. Because they do look like little fairy lights, don't they? Aren't they gorgeous? So, yeah, I did start it again. Completely pulled the other pair out. And I will remake that pattern, but I think it just needs to be a plain yarn. Um, these are going to have an afterthought heel. So I've already put, can you see that? I've already put the markers for my where my heels are going to go because they're going to be shorty socks. I prefer shorty socks to longer ones. So I'm just going to keep knitting now. I think it's, I think you do about, I normally do nine inches in the foot for a pair of socks for me. Um, so I'll knit for five inches before I decrease for the toes. And then that gives me two inches to the toe and two, in, two inches for the heel. But yeah, they're really, really pretty. I think the arm's just gorgeous, isn't it? So, as I've said before, I've never done an afterthought heel. I know there's a lot of... Kay Jones has got a, a tutorial, as has Crazy Sock Lady and Ellie from Craft House Magic. So I think I'll be okay. I think between the three of them, I should be able to follow one of them. But yeah, so that uh, they are my vanilla socks. And I only have one more work in progress. I've got a couple more, but th these are sort of the ones that I'm just working on at the moment. The Snoopy blanket is still on the go, but it's just too warm to be sat with that blanket on my knee while I'm crocheting. It's far too warm, so I'll pick it up again when the weather cools down a little bit. So yeah, I've only got one more. Now, this yarn, I showed on my last podcast as well. And this is Cascade Yarns Heritage. And it is 75% superwashed merino and 25% nylon. And it's the colourway is Birdo and it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, you know that I bought this for the boxy. But once I'd finished the Whitmore, I just did not... I just thought another huge project in four-ply yarn that's going to be just quite monotonous knitting. I'm really not going to enjoy it. So I had a little flick on Ravelry. And I came across this pattern. Now this, if I find the picture. Excuse my huge crease. I won't even attempt to say the name, but I will show you the name on the front of the pattern. The pattern is the Mysterium T, and that's the name there. And I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. And it's, I love the name of the pattern. I love the, the, the finished object as well, but I love the name of the pattern. But what really got me was the details. The word mysterium is rooted in ancient Greek and Latin and is known as a plural of mystery or secret. Also described as various unknown elements thought to make up existing forms of matter or a substance seen as an elemental or pure form of something else. New patterns sometimes feel like a collection of mysteries. The more we allow ourselves to be a beginner and make mistakes, the more knowledge we will be able to collect. Unravel the mystery of new techniques with this drop shoulder tee. I just loved that. I just thought it's so nice. And it kind of... It's really weird. Because I've been thinking about my mum a lot this past few weeks. And she lived in Greece. That's where that tattoo comes from. That says mum. If you can't even see it. That says mum in Greek and there's a little dolphin. Yeah, you cannot. I'll try and put a picture on the screen where you can see it. And um, my mum passed away in 2013 and um, she's actually buried in Greece. And I don't know, this this pattern kind of just, uh, for some really weird reason, it just reminds me of her. So I've started it. I only started it last night, so there's not a great deal to show you. This is the sum total of the knitting. <laughs> now, from what I can work out, as we all know, I'm really, really new to uh, knitting garments. So you start at the neck, you work flat, and then you pick up stitches along the edge edges, and then you do some kind of cable cast on to pick it around the back. Work flat again. This makes no sense to me, but this is what I've discovered from the pattern. And then you join to work in the round. And at the bottom... It's got this gorgeous lace section. Can you see it? 
So you actually look forward to getting down to that bottom bit. And it's also on the arms. I don't know if you can... Oh, can you see it on there? And it's short sleeved as well, so I'm not going to be stuck on Sleeve Island. Now, the pattern called for 3.5mm needles. I only had 3.75. I do tend to go up a needle size anyway because I'm such a tight knitter. This is where you're going to say, you did swatch, right, Alex? You did swatch? No, I didn't. But, but. I've got to knit flat. I hate swatching. I just don't like doing it. So I thought I'll knit flat and then I'll do a little measurement in it just to make sure it's similar to the swatch gauge. And if it's drastically wrong, I'll pull it out and change the needle size back down to a smaller needle. That's not so not how you should be knitting. I know people are probably screaming at me saying you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> But I haven't swatched for the Whitmore and I didn't swatch for the um, the Andrew Mowry sweaters that I made. I know some, some people don't swatch. I don't think I'm the only one. I just, when it comes to a new pattern, I just want to start it. I don't want to sit and have to do a swatch and then block it and then wait for it to dry. I just want to start it. This is where it's going to come back and bite me, isn't it? <laughs> I feel a bit embarrassed, but there we go. So, I don't know. You see, that's really long. It's supposed to be a dropped shoulder tee. If that's going to be the whole... That can't be the whole... I don't know. I don't know how this is going to come together because I've never made... I've, only, I've made a bottom up and I've made a top down. But this seems like quite a different construction, so I may have to pull it out and... Chip change needle sizes I don't know I'm just gonna go for it and see what happens it'll be fine that's like my line isn't it it'll be fine it'll be fine worst case scenario if the next two wide I can just put a couple of stitches in and make it smaller but we'll see how I get on you're all probably screaming at me like seriously Alex what are you doing what are you doing but yeah I can blame it on being dosed up on paracetamol and ibuprofen for so long and not really myself, I don't know. But no, <laughs> it's um, it's going to be interesting. So yeah, you basically you do the front panel and then the back panel and then you join to work in the round and you pick up stitches for the arms, I think. Where's that schematic thing? We'll see how I get on. If any of you have made it and you're screaming at me that I have got this so drastically wrong, just leave me a comment below <laughs> or contact me on Instagram. I've, I've only gone up one needle size. I can't. And I am a really tight knit, but it's looking quite loose. You see, it's looking a little bit loose. I'm just concerned about how wide that is. It'll be fine. We'll see how it goes. I think it's because I don't understand how I'm going to construct it yet. If you knit flat, knit this bit flat, and then you put them stitches on hold and you pick up and do a bit of a cast on. You see, the pattern does say the more we allow ourselves to be a beginner and make mistakes, the more knowledge we'll be able to collect. So that's what I'm doing. I'm collecting knowledge. That's the whole point of the pattern. We'll see how I get on with that. So that is my only other work in progress, I think. There's no point in showing you the, um, Snoop, uh, the Snoopy blanket because there's just not a lot of progress on it. There's, I've just put a couple of rows on it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't even be able to tell. So that is that. <laughs> So we shall move on to incoming goodies. I got a lovely, lovely surprise in the post last week. Um, this was from Jane, who is Mouse Knits and Crafts on YouTube. I was not expecting this. When this parcel came through the post, I was thinking, who's this from? 
and she sent me this. Isn't it beautiful? Look at that, it's absolutely gorgeous. And it's a drawstring as well. And then inside, you can see, it's like, excuse my pattern in there. It's all fully lined. It's absolutely beautiful and such a lovely, lovely, thoughtful gift. So thank you, Jane. Honestly, I appreciated it so much. I was saying that I don't have a lot of project bags and that's why she'd sent it because she knew I didn't have a lot of project bags. And I was just so pleased to get it. I know that she doesn't sell these and she just makes them as gifts. So I feel really, really privileged to have one of Jane's, one of Jane's bags. And the, the, uh, sorry, my nose is all bunged up again. The, um, fabric is just beautiful. Look at that, just look at that. Little rabbits on bikes. They're just gorgeous. And it's so, such a well-made bag. It's beautiful. So this is holding my, um, terribly simple shawl. And I absolutely just love it. I just absolutely love it. I feel so spoiled and special. Honestly, Jane, you've got no idea how much this made my day. So thank you so much for that. So I have that. My partner also bought me a project bag, bless him. Because I've been making the Snoopy blanket. He bought me a Snoopy bag. Look at that. I've got the card. It's in here. This is from Clara Rose Craft. And this is kind of like, I think it's like canvas. It comes with this gorgeous Snoopy pendant. And on the zipper pull, there's another little Snoopy there. It's all lined as well. It's just absolutely beautiful. So I've been really, really spoiled to have such gorgeous two gorgeous project bags so i finally have enough to hold all my works in progress i feel very very lucky to have those and one more incoming thing that i got i took my little boy to a birthday party last weekend and um we actually ended up after the party going to skipton which is quite local to where i am I knew there was a yarn shop in Skipton, but I'd never actually managed to find it before. So I brought it up on Google Maps and I was wandering around Skipton with my little map and I managed to find it. And it's actually, the yarn shop is called Pearl and Jane. They do have an Instagram account and they have a website as well. Now they are going to be at Yarndale this year. They've done an Instagram live um, and they are going to be at Yarndale this year. And they are making the most beautiful, beautiful boxes um, I don't know if I can find a picture of these boxes, but if you go onto the website, they are on there. And the boxes, they're called the Sunshine Box. And they've got, it holds yarn, it'll hold a pattern. And there's places where you can, I'm not selling this very well at all. There's a tape measure on it and all sorts of things. I'll try and find a picture and put it on the front. But these boxes are absolutely gorgeous. Now I know that they're making some for Yarndale this year. For those of you that are going to Yarndale, I'm going to try and get tickets. I've never actually been to Yarndale, but I really think I should because it's so local to me. So as soon as the tickets come out for sale, I will be buying them. But she's also a designer as well, and she's got a lot of patterns for sale. And I went into this shop, and honestly, it was just... If I didn't have two kids in tow, I'd have been there all day. It was absolutely gorgeous. I didn't buy very much, although they have these tiny, tiny baby sock blockers. Now, I don't knit socks for babies. I don't know anyone that's got any babies, so I have no need for baby sock blockers, but I nearly bought them. I was like, oh my God, they are so cute. But I did buy my very first ever Zauber ball. It's the only thing I bought, because um, I had two kids in town. They were getting a bit bored in a yarn shop. But I did buy this. It's absolutely gorgeous. I've never used it before, like I say. And it's Zauber Ball Crazy. 100 grams. Uh, 75% superwash. 25% polyamide. 
forgot if there's a colourway on there. But if that's the colourway, can you see that? It's a bit bad. That's not even focusing at all. But yeah, so I'm really excited to use this. I'm going to cast a pair of socks on with this when I have finished my Christmas in July socks. So yeah, that is that. And that is it for incoming as well, I think. I'll put that back. So that is everything for incoming. So the only other thing that I've got to talk about is my shop update. So you all know that I've opened a little Etsy shop and it's officially now my little business. Um, so I've done a shop update, sort of like a little trial just to see what had happened a few weeks ago. So this is my first official proper, proper shop update of my little venture into the world of dyeing. Um, three of the skeins have gone, so I think I've just got seven left now. I've only done ten, I'm just doing ten at a time, just starting off really, really small. I will show you what I've got. Right. So the shop will be linked below. Right, so this is my first one. This is this one, which I'll just open out to show you. This one is called Galaxy. It's all 100 grams and it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And that is just lots of deep tonal oranges and purple and that one is called galaxy that one is available in the shop we also have this one which i can't actually remember what i called this one and i can't check because it's on my phone so i'll have to put it on the screen but this one is just pinks and purples i really really like this one quite heavily speckled Let me see that. There's even a bit of yellow here where the colour's broken a little bit as it's gone into the dye pot. It's absolutely gorgeous. I really enjoyed doing this one. So we also have that one. Hopefully I'm not boring you all with this. Sticking to the pink and purple theme, we've got this one. I think this one is my second favourite. And this is more, it's like the other one, but it's not as speckled. They go quite well together, them two, actually. We're doing a fade. Excuse the dog barking. They're all 100 grams, all 75, 25. That's one. And this one is called Volcanic Blaze. And this one is really deep oranges. And reds. Let me see. A lot of deep reds and oranges in that one. There is that one. And for those of you that like the brights, we have a neon pixies, which is really the the camera is not showing how bright this one is. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's very bright though. I know a lot of people like the bright ones. So that is Neon Pixies. And for my last one, I have made two. And this one is called Blue Suede. And this is just blues and browns. There we go. That's a better way to show you, isn't it? It's gorgeous. It's a really, really nice one, is this? And there are, like I say, two of these ones. Which, if these don't sell, I'm keeping these ones. This is my absolute favourite. So that is it for the yarn update. So if you've not... Been and had a look in the shop yet if you 
want to have a look, go and have a look. If you see something and you, you want it saved and for payday or anything like that, just send me a message. I do that with other yarn dies. If I see a skein of yarn that I really want and I'd like it saved, and I do just say, can you put it to one side for me for a couple of weeks? So if you want anything like that doing, just let me know. And I'm quite happy to put things, take it out of the shop if you want to get it in a couple of weeks' time or whatever. So I think that is all the knitting content and I've been talking for 42 minutes. Oh my God, I'm really sorry it's such a long one. I didn't expect it to be such a long one actually. thought it'd be quite a, a quick episode. I didn't have a lot, I've only got the one work in progress. So yeah, hopefully by the next episode I will have, I don't think I will have finished the Stephen West shawl but I'll hopefully be somewhere near with it and there should be... Um, What's the date? Say the 15th. August Bear might not be ready. It might be the podcast after. But yeah, so I hope that you're all okay. We're all fine. The children have got another week left at school before they break up. My little boy is just super excited for breaking up from school. He'll be going into year six in September. And he's very excited about it. Um, so we've got all the joy of the summer holidays to come. I don't think we've got any plans to go anywhere but we'll just we'll see what happens and see what the where the mood takes us um so yeah let me know if you've got any nice summer holiday plans and, and oh do you know right my hair started growing back look can you see it i've got this tuft going on it's growing back loads look all of a sudden it started growing back. I don't know whether it'll stay growing back, but I'm quite impressed I didn't shave it off now because I nearly did. But it started coming out loads. And I thought if it gets any worse, because it was all just on one side of my head, I thought if it gets any worse, I'm just going to shave it off. Because it's sort of, when you're sort of looking in the mirror and you're seeing all it, the patches all the time, it was quite disheartening. So I thought if it gets any worse, I'll just, I'm just going to shave it off. Anyway. It's coming back. All this first bit that came out has grown back. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Maybe it will come back after all. The consultant did say that he thought it had come back, but I kind of didn't hold out any hope. But yeah, so I'm really, really impressed. I do have like this whole tuft thing, but it's grown really, really fast. So I'm really, oh, I'm just like, oh my God, <laughs> my hair's growing back. <laughs> I have hair again. Um, so yeah. I'll stop whittling on. I've been whittling on for 45 minutes. I will stop. So I hope that you're all okay and um, I hope that you enjoy your next crafty two weeks. Do leave me comments. I do reply to every single comment and I do love reading all your comments. I've had some... It's nice because I'm starting to re realise the ones that I know will comment. The people that have been with me right from the very beginning. And there's a couple of people that every week will leave me such lovely comments. And I look for, I, I, they're the ones that, you know, I look forward to and I wait for. I think, you know, I've not heard from such and such. It's it's nice. It's nice to read the comments. And it's nice to reply back. Um, so do leave a comment um, if you have time. If not, it doesn't matter. If you're not already subscribed, do consider subscribing. I know this episode has probably been quite rambly. Um, but like the video, it helps the... YouTube analytics and it helps my little channel grow and I know that I'm a small channel but I just I like doing it I like being part of this community and I like showing you all the things that I'm doing and it's just it's a lovely community to be in and you've all been so kind and so accepting of me and it's been lovely so thank you like I say I will do another giveaway if we get to 500 subscribers so if you've not already subscribed, do consider doing it. I'll stop rabbiting on and I'll leave you to get on with the rest of your day. So I have a lovely two weeks, everybody, and I shall see you then. Bye-bye.